Hi, this is Jeff Warren, and I'm going to talk a bit about how to work with operations and a bit about snapshots in Spectral Workbench 2. I'm going to go through a lot of different techniques in this video, um, and uh, you know, you might only be interested in the first few, so feel free to just skip ahead or to drop out whenever you want. Um, I'm just going to keep going. Uh, so uh, let's say you have a spectrum like this. You've calibrated it. You've you know using uh, what you learned perhaps in the uh, intro video and the calibration tutorial videos, um, and now uh, you'd like to do some more analysis or to manipulate it in other ways. Now, the, um, the best thing about Spectral Workbench 2, in my opinion, is the operations system. So what this is, is uh, all of these tools, or almost all of these tools, create operations which are run on the data of the spectrum. And uh, you've already used this uh, a little bit by using the calibration uh, and the copy calibration tools. Um, the copy calibration tool uh, generates this operation, and this operation uh, is called calibrate. It points at this spectrum. It's all listed here and it specifies a specific snapshot uh, or a moment in time of that spectrum. So what happens is that each um, operation you, you add to a spectrum is added to this list in order. So these are time ordered. The bottom is the most recent. And to show you uh, why this is important, um, I'll, I'll just do a simple one. I'm going to smooth this spectrum. So I press smooth. And uh, operations are they're easy to use in part because they have these tool panes. So each, each button here launches a little tool pane with some explanation. And it usually has a, a default in here. Uh, and you can just press apply. So what the smooth uh, operation is doing, or the smooth tool is doing, is it's smoothing this uh, average line by the value that was in there. And you can see that it's generated um, a uh, smooth colon 3 uh, operation, where here 3 refers to the number of pixels that have been blended to get you this smooth line. Now you also notice when you did that, uh, it generated this little thumbtack. The thumbtack refers to a snapshot. Now the if you click on this, you'll learn all about, all about how snapshots work, and I'm not going to go into it except to say that now if you uh, referred to this data somewhere else, you would get this most recent snapshot, which is after the smoothing has been performed. Now, what the reason we did this is that if uh, you do a bunch of operations, let's say someone depends on the data at this moment, but you continue to add more operations, uh, because they're pointing at this snapshot, they're not going to be uh, messed up by the additional stuff you do. Um, to the spectrum. So this is sort of like a version control system. You can, you can undo it as well. As long as no one's depending on that, you can undo it and the smoothing will reverse. Now, um, what we're going to do next is uh, look at um, some other operations you can do. So I, I just calibrated this one. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, do some additional stuff to it. Let's say, given the spectrometer I've built, I know that data above this line and below 400, say, is uh, not very useful. I mean, right here you can see it's all black. But, um, but let's say uh, we know that the webcam can't really see, you know, as we do, we can't really see uh, any light that's below 400 nanometers or any light that's above, you know, 650 or 700, um, depending on the webcam. And um, if you've removed the infrared filter, you might get more. But let's just say we're going to limit it to that. So we use the limit wavelength range. And it has a pretty strong default here, but uh, or a pretty good default here. But I'm going to drop that to 700 and apply it. This operation, as you'll see in a moment, is called range. And it takes two terms separated by a hyphen. So it, it actually does that all for you in the tool pane. So don't worry about it too much. But you can see that actually now both the image and the graph have been stretched so that none of the data is below 400 or higher than 700. And you get this weird number here because what it's doing is actually uh, finding the highest nanometer value as calculated out by the calibration that is still not above 700. So you won't get a round number there. Uh, we might change that in later versions to just show the, the cutoff. All right, so we have that. Another thing that this uh, allows you to do is to um, uh, to compare. So once you've done this and you hit compare, and you want to add another 
spectrum. You, you, it showed you a list of recent ones that are yours, and you can search for others. Now it's going to show you this. Now, this data, you can see, is it's probably not calibrated. I mean, because it starts at zero. There's no way that you could collect uh, data like that. So you can go to comparisons and close it. This is actually not using operations. What this is using is just a tool that calls up another spectrum and, and inserts it. It doesn't persist. So you can just do some comparisons there. We'll try another one. Let's see. Apply this. Give it a second. And you can see here that our calibration doesn't completely match up with the calibration from the, the spectrum we just included. And we might say that that's a, that's a bad thing. Uh, and, you know, the comparison tool has allowed us to see that. Um, what else can we do? Um, I'm going to move on to another one here. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced. Um, what I'm going to show you is that we can use this transform tool. And the transform tool, it, um, let's see, it, what it does is it takes every pixel along this line, every, every pixel from the image that is graphed in this line, and it allows you to run a simple math expression in order to generate the black line. So the inputs are, for, for any given pixel, the blue, the red, green, and blue uh, data from this image, or the black, the current black line, which is the average. But what it's going to do is overwrite that black line with a new black line, a new main spectrum line uh, that is uh, composed how you decide. You can read about how this works in this transform section here, but just to show you how it works, uh, I'm just going to use the letter R. You get these these terms um, that you can use, and each represents a different source of input data. And if I just apply this transform with R, you'll see that it's actually used just the red channel to generate uh, the main spectrum line. And because of that, we lose some of this data over here. We don't see this blue line here. You know, we don't we don't see nearly as much of these. We basically miss this little peak here. Um, and here it's it's blown out. It's actually close to 100%. Uh, and we don't see anything over here. So I mean, there are certain reasons why we might want to do that. But just to show you how that's how it works, I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to say, OK, actually, instead of averaging the three colors, I want to generate a line that actually sums them. So I'll just add them together here using uh, basic JavaScript math notation, or which is basically math notation. When I apply that, it's adjusting the overall percentage above 100 because it's adding them together. And it, we're getting um, data where instead of being averaged, uh, we're just summing them. That should look pretty similar. Let me do one more that's more advanced. So I'm deleting this, letting it clear. We're going to use the math expression uh, for uh, the JavaScript math expression for maximum. So it, you, it takes two terms. I think it can take any number of terms, but I'll just do R and G. So it's going to look at which is the, the greater one, and it will use that. Uh, actually, why don't I do minimum? And we're going to just experiment here. I'm going to use all three. So it will it will choose the, the, the smallest one. And what I, the reason I'm doing that here is that I'm going to try to uh, get a spectrum line that uh, only shows uh, stuff that happened in all three channels. Uh, so we'll see if that uh, we'll see if that worked. Apply. Give it a second to process. Yeah, and uh, you notice that any time there was one channel that didn't register a peak, we used that channel. And uh, you know there might be advantages to that. There's all sorts of things you could do with this. And I wanted to show one of them, which is that with this same spectrum, um, you notice that you know if we go back here, um, I deleted the the one I just did. There's a lot of baseline noise here. You can actually see in the image itself, it's sort of purplish. Um, and that's because 
even in the black areas, for whatever reason in this spectrometer, there may have been a little bit of ambient light in there. The webcam may be, you know, have heated up or something or and just be registering noise. But for whatever reason, you know, even the areas that should be completely black or, or near black are registering at sometimes above 10%. That's quite high. Uh, over here, we're getting them as low as, as four or five occasionally. So actually, that's why I, oops, that's why I titled this High Baseline Noise Spectrum. And I did an experiment to see if I could remove that noise. And you can see a comparison here of two spectra. This is the sets view. Um, this is the one we were looking at. And this is the one with the noise removed. And it looks like I was pretty successful in removing that noise. Well, how did I do that? I did it. We'll look at the one with the noise removed now. And what I did was I ran a transform operation. It's a pretty long one. And you can see here what it did uh, was it, it looked for uh, the maximum. Uh, well, it subtracted 15% from the average. A is for average. And then it took the maximum uh, comparing that to zero, meaning that it basically like dropped the whole line below zero by 15% cut off anything that fell below zero. And then it, it added the 15% back in with a, with a modifier. So it basically stretched the remaining data from roughly zero to 100. It's a little short of that. But it's, it's a long enough expression. I didn't want to do anything more complex than that. Um, but it just shows you the power of the transform operation. Because if you go back to the comparison, you can see that our peaks are still quite intact, uh, the shape of them and so forth. But our baseline is you know, rock solid at zero. Uh, right here, you see a little bit, but that might actually be noise we want to keep or information we want to keep. Whereas out here, it's completely at zero. So I've, I basically filtered it so that anything falling below 15% is now zero. So that gives you a sense of some of the possibilities here. Um, I'll just show one more. Um, and uh, just for... Uh, for uh, a closing note. I'm going to copy. Uh, let's see. I'm going to copy this ID number. I'm going to go to the one that has the noise, and then I'm going to do something cool. I'm going to do the subtract spectrum, and I'm going to search. It's probably in my list here, but I'm going to just search for that specific one, and I'm going to apply it. So what's going to happen here is it's going to subtract the cleaned spectrum from the noisy spectrum. And what's left is the noise. So um, you can see here that uh, the zero line, you know, we don't cross that. And this is all the noise that we subtracted out between the, the two spectra here. And if you want, I, can, I, I believe I can do a comparison and actually compare that spectrum just so that we can see. Yeah, so here, and you can see the relationship. This is the spectrum with the noise all removed, and alongside it in black is graphed the actual uh, noise that was removed in order to make that spectrum. Uh, if we wanted, we could save these as a set additionally. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you, uh, show you some of these possibilities. I think we've only scratched the surface here. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but there's one more tool I didn't talk about, and that's Blend. Blend is like transform, but it actually allows you to enter the idea of a different spectrum and then to use math expressions, not only to manipulate your own data, but in fact to manipulate your data, the data of this spectra, with the added data of a different spectrum. So it, 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 it you know, the, the expressions you come up with are even more complex, but they're also uh, potentially more powerful. Great, that's it for uh, operations. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there may be follow-up tutorials, but this covers a lot of ground, and I hope you enjoy uh, using Spectral Workbench, too. Thanks.